What's good, YouTube? It's your boy D Rip. Hey, today we got a video. I usually say a special video, but this is something that is out there. And, um, I don't knock my screen over. All right. Uh, now this side's out. Anyway. All right. So, so today we're going to have the details to, um, Vince McMahon's, um, lawsuit. I don't really know too much of the details. We just know something happened. Bro, I literally was laughing. I just did another video about our truth like before this. So I was laughing. And uh, I jumped back into my screen. So it's a little off. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. First time coming across, make sure I get a hit thumbs up. Make sure y'all subscribe because we're almost at 5K and I won't be able to hit that 5K without y'all. So go ahead and continue to show the support. Continue to subscribe. But we don't really know too much of the details about this um situation. <sighs> the world of wrestling is um changing. A lot of people lost respect for this guy because of this situation. We already knew that he was not a good person as far as, you know, being a boss. But... This is still something related to being a boss, using money to keep people quiet. But let's figure out exactly what happened. I probably won't talk much in this at all because we're here to just watch it. I'm not really here to say anything about this because I don't really have anything to say about it. If I do have something to say, then I'll say it. But if I don't, we're just going to sit here and watch. Without further ado, let's get into this video. One of the biggest names in the entertainment industry has once again stepped down after accusations of rape, assault, and human trafficking. We're analyzing the 67-page lawsuit against 78-year-old WWE founder Vince McMahon and bringing you some of the most shocking details. Welcome to Sidebar, presented by Law & Crime. I'm Jesse Weber. That's crazy. Apartments is fucked. A former staffer in WWE's legal and talent departments has filed a lawsuit in U.S. District Court against World Wrestling Entertainment, more commonly known as WWE, Vince McMahon, the founder of WWE and executive chairman, and John Laurinaitis, a retired wrestler and head Both? of the talent relations department at WWE. Now, this was filed in Connecticut because McMahon and... If you want to pause it at any point, feel free to pause it. I'm, I'm not going to try to go through this too fast, but... A hey, y'all could pause it. Feel free. Grant are both Connecticut citizens, and Connecticut is where WWE headquarters is based. Now, first, let me tell you, before we even get into this lawsuit, a couple of things. We are mentioning her name, Janelle Grant, because she has chosen to be publicly identified. That's number one. Number two, this lawsuit includes very, very sexually explicit text messages and descriptions that we cannot show you here. We just will not do it. That's fine what we're going to do is break follow down me. some of the most disturbing allegations as best as we can. So to start, there is a line at the beginning of this complaint that I thought was very interesting. And it says, quote, Miss Grant is filing this lawsuit not just to address her own suffering, but also to act for those who are afraid to speak out. I find that interesting because as we have seen sometimes when a high profile person is accused by one person, then others will come out too. One person's claims gets the ball rolling. Sometimes they aren't comfortable coming forward immediately. But just to let you know that Vince McMahon, uh, he has already been accused by prior employees of trying to cover up their relationship. So some of this is not new. Having said that, when we get into the details of this, it's kind of unthinkable. But according to the lawsuit, Grant met Mr. McMahon in 2019 when they lived in the same building. Grant's attorneys say that she had been the full-time caregiver for her parents who both died and that the family home was lost in the parents' bankruptcy. The complaint explains that she was in a really low place in her life. Well, after being introduced to McMahon, he befriended her, showed her a lot of attention, allegedly offered her a role with WWE, told her that he would you know, help her life, although what that role would be wasn't entirely clear in the beginning, and that seems to be something that McMahon allegedly took advantage of. You see, from the beginning, Grant alleges that McMahon would greet her in his underwear, his condo, pull her close to him, tell him intimate details about his personal life. A grant what? Grant says eventually she was coerced into a sexual relationship with McMahon in exchange for a new role at WWE called Administrator Coordinator in the legal department. 
And while she started there, McMahon eventually transferred her to the talent relations department headed up by John Laurinaitis, again, a co-defendant in this case, a former wrestler. Despite Grant's alleged pleas to end this essentially quid pro quo sexual relationship with McMahon, it did not. And according to Grant, it only got worse. First, Grant says that McMahon would share sexually explicit photos and videos of her with men both inside and outside of the company, including TV production teams, executives, producers, crew, even a world-famous athlete looking to sign with the WWE. This person is not identified in the lawsuit, and we'll talk a little bit more about this later on. Then McMahon is accused of recruiting individuals to have sex with Grant. What? To participate in threesomes. He also allegedly directed her to have sex with Mr. Laurinaitis, who is, again, named in the lawsuit. He was expected to perform sex acts at WWE headquarters before, during, and after work hours. To give you an example of what we're talking about here and what she was allegedly subjected to, the lawsuit says that on May 9th, 2020, McMahon effocated on Grant's head during a threesome, commanded her to continue the sexual encounter with the third person referred to as McMahon's friend. We later learned that that third person was McMahon's physical therapist. Just going back to that other allegation about McMahon and Laurinaitis having sexual contact with her at the office at WWE headquarters, this was allegedly despite her begging them to stop, and each held her down as the assaults happened. They allegedly said to her, no means yes. Truly horrific stuff when you think what? Lawsuit just describes these multiple sexual encounters between Grant and McMahon, which Grant says were not consensual. She claims that he assaulted her multiple times with sex toys named after male wrestlers. According to the lawsuit, quote, in addition to her panic attacks, Ms. Grant began experiencing increasingly severe physical, mental, and emotional symptoms, including sleep disruption, dizziness, exhaustion, rashes, weight loss, I don't even want to watch this no more, bro. Um, this video is by Law and Crime Network. They have 5 million um, subscribers. If you want to check this out, this is honestly very disturbing. Wow. I didn't know it was that bad. Like, I knew it was bad, but this is... This is ridiculous. Like, this is going to make a lot of people not even want to watch wrestling anymore. Hair loss and migraines. November 2019, Miss Grant informed Mr. McMahon that her doctor suggested... Now I'm actually curious. So you know how WWE works, right? When, when somebody did something crazy, for example, Chris Benoit, you know, y'all know what he did. I'm not going to say it. He literally has been erased from WWE history. So with Vince McMahon doing this stuff, will Vince be erased from WWE history? I'm actually curious, will Vince McMahon be, be um, erased from history? Because there's been a lot of people erased from history for doing some crazy stuff. And this probably tops, this is at the top of the list. This is at the top of the list. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know how this is, is ever going to be ignored. So that her symptoms. Because now for the rest of WWE's existence, unless they change the name, which even if they do change the name, it's probably still going to be remembered. For the rest of WWE's existence, they're going to be like, oh, you're talking about WWE? The company that was founded by Vince McMahon, which did this, this, and this? It's just never going to be the same now. Stemmed from trauma and ongoing stress. McMahon mocked her, quote, emotional trauma, my ass. However, on November 20th, 2019, McMahon insisted that Miss Grant see a physician of his choosing. There's another allegation oh, regarding sorry. someone oh, identified sorry. only as WWE superstar. This is a pro wrestler in the organization. And the allegation is that McMahon used Grant as a sexual pawn to entice this WWE superstar to sign a new contract with company during the course of this event series of events mcmahon texted grant a reminder that she was an enslaved object to him saying quote i want to drive you lower and lower so low that you might beg me to sell you and reportedly 
showered Grant with gifts financed by the WWE, including tickets to VIP events, gift cards worth thousands of dollars, clothing, jewelry, flowers, BMW, chef catered dinners, a spa vacation. And then in January of 2022, McMahon had told Grant that his wife had found out about their sexual relationship. He said that her time at the WWE was at an end, insisted that she sign a non-disclosure agreement, an NDA. In the lawsuit, her lawyers say, quote, in the days ahead, McMahon put Miss Grant under immense pressure to sign, saying that refusing would not only jeopardize McMahon, his family, and the company, but that she'd surely become a public headline, suffer reputational ruin, including from the pornographic content McMahon had captured and face McMahon's legal resources. Conversely, McMahon reassured her that her signature would ensure his continued support and protection and safeguard her reputation. Ultimately, Miss Grant succumbed to the pressure and signed the NDA in exchange for payments, which McMahon later stopped making. The lawsuit wow. claims that multiple high-ranking employees at WWE knew about this sexual relationship as well as assaults allegedly committed on Grant at the offices did nothing to stop it. Grant's legal team says that she... Bro. Report it. I'm not talking about her. If you know something is going on like this, report it to the police. Like, they didn't say nothing because they didn't want to lose their job. If you report it to the police, they take out Vince. How is Vince going to fire you if he's not even there? Nobody deserves to go through this, bro. Like, this is ridiculous. Like, now she has to live the rest of her life with that traumatic event. It's, no, no, it's not okay at all. It's not okay. Speak up, man. If y'all know this is happening to somebody, speak up. Report it, please. It's not okay. She is suffering from PTSD and has struggled with suicidal ideation. Now, this lawsuit has different claims or causes of action that I'm going to go into right now. And remember, in a civil case, the standard of proof is not beyond a reasonable doubt, like we have in a criminal case, but usually preponderance of the evidence. That's a lower standard, meaning that Grant has to show that more than likely this happened, more than 50% that these things happen, that they're true. So it is a lower standard to prove, but you still have to prove your claims nonetheless. Here, not only Grant's account, probably her testifying, but the incredibly sexually explicit text messages that are included in this complaint, the ones from McMahon, yeah, that can definitely help prove her case. And during discovery in the course of a litigation where they will get more information from McMahon and WWE, this is going to be evidence from the defendants that Grant hopes help prove her claims. We can't show you or read you these text messages in the complaint because honestly, they're just are too graphic and explicit. I believe it. They I do not want to. I don't want to. Alleged text from I'm McMahon in which he describes violent sex acts he wants to perform on Grant or have others perform on her. Messages call her all sorts of degrading names. They tell her what other men have said about explicit photos and videos of her. It appears to also be scheduling sexual liaisons between Grant and other men like Laurenitis. Texts purportedly from McMahon also repeatedly tell Grant that if anyone were to find out about the relationship, she would lose her job and possibly face legal consequences. All right, so it's no secret that listening to stories like this McMahon one are tough to hear, and it just reminds you how dark life can be. And, you know, talking to somebody about what you're feeling, what you're going through, that can be a really, really good thing because your mental health is so important. That is why we have partnered with BetterHelp. They're the sponsor. I don't want to hear your sponsor. All you can also switch there. Oh, BetterHelp, actually, yes. BetterHelp is 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 a good tool. It is a good tool. I heard it's like a kind of like a counselor, somebody to talk to, give you therapy. But yes, BetterHelp. But I don't have that sponsor, so I'm skipping it. Trauma. It is a friendship cycles. Learn how to say. Want to check out more? Visit BetterHelp dot com slash sidebar today to get 10 percent off of slash sidebar let's quickly go through all of these counts there are nine here and they're important to understand so the first two they're asking the court for declaratory relief you are basically asking for a court to set the record straight about someone's rights so here grant is asking that the nda that she signed 
be deemed illegal under federal law, namely the Speak Out Act. She argues that it invalidates these contracts if there is a sexual assault or harassment dispute. The second claim argues that the NDA is invalid under Connecticut's common law. Now, that's not a statute. A common law is basically the laws that come from judges' decisions and court cases. And here she's saying that the NDA is too broad and that she entered into this NDA under duress, so it's invalid. The third cause of action says that McMahon and Laurinaitis violated the Trafficking Victims Protection Act 2000, or TVPA. Suit claims that they recruited, enticed, and solicited Grant for sexual abuse and exploitation, especially as McMahon traveled across the United States. Crossing state lines becomes a big factor in sex trafficking cases. Hmm. The allegation is that they used fraud, such as the lore of career opportunities, to coerce Grant into sexual activities. Likewise, count four is that the WWE knowingly participated in this trafficking, and benefited from, and facilitated this venture in violation of the TVPA. And that's why I'm saying a lot of people, if they're still working there and they knew about this right now, they're going to be gone. They're going to get packed up real quick. If they're still there and they know that this happened and they didn't speak up, bro, they're about to get packed up. Count five is negligence. That's when you have a legal duty to use reasonable care. You don't do that, and that causes injury or harm. Here, this negligence claim is against the WWE, namely that they failed as an employer who has the responsibility and duty to make sure their employees are safe. Count six is civil battery against McMahon and the WWE. Now, that is about intentional, harmful, and offensive contact that McMahon allegedly engaged in on Grant. And there is one particular disturbing account that it's cited here where McMahon allegedly forced Grant to perform oral sex on him in a very, very graphic and violent scene. She claims the WWE is liable for the battery, that they're legally liable, because they're legally liable for the actions of their chairman under a vicarious liability legal theory. That is where you hold companies on the hook for the actions of their employees who engage in wrongdoing. Those actions are within the scope of their employment or they were done while they're on the job. Count seven is also civil battery, except this time it's against the WWE and Laurinaitis. So specifically these forced sexual contact or acts between Laurinaitis and Grant, including ones that were done at his office in the WWE headquarters. <laughs> now, counts eight and nine are intentional or negligent infliction of emotional distress. This is against McMahon, Laurinaitis, and the WWE. The basic idea is that they intended or should have known that their actions would cause Grant to suffer emotional distress. She lists a number of extreme and outrageous forms of conduct like with McMahon's text messages, sexual assault, trafficking, exploiting her. Laurinaitis, she claims, treated her like a sexual object, (laughs) including forcing her to travel to his hotel for sexual activity. And the complaint highlights that he and... I can't, bro. I can't. Like, this this makes me mad, bro. Like, if y'all want to continue to watch this, y'all can. Y'all can. Y'all can. I'm not going to continue to watch this because it's making me mad because nobody deserves this, for one. For two, nobody spoke up. Nobody tried to step in, interfere, and stop it. And it just makes me mad, bro. It makes me mad. It makes me very mad. And I'm being quiet, but I'm, I'm, I'm mad. I'm, I'm hot right now. I'm not going to lie. I'm mad. I'm mad. I have a daughter. This happened to a woman. It makes me mad. All right. Look, man. For any other videos you want me to react to in particular, let me know down below in the comments, man. Like this video, subscribe if you're new. It's your boy, Drew, man. I'm out.